YouTube. For this week's reports and analytics tutorial, I am going to go ahead and cover custom variables, um, specifically the three types of custom variables that can be set and uh, uh, what the differences are between the three types of custom variables. Uh, the first type is under site metrics and they are called custom events um, and they have a, a funnel that can be used with them and I'll go into more detail in a moment. Uh, then the other two are custom conversions and custom traffic. Uh, these two are also often referred to as um, EVARs and SPROPs. So if you ever see someone, you know, talk to someone who uses uh, reports and analytics, also called Site Catalyst, and they talk about EVARs and SPROPs, uh, you'll know that the EVARs are custom conversions and the SPROPs are custom traffic. All right, so we'll go ahead and talk about custom events first. And uh, what we can look at here is I have three custom events set right now, although I'm actually not tracking these two at the moment yet. I'm still having to do the tagging for it and I haven't done that yet. But there's contact view formed and contact view form submitted. And if I had these tagged and I actually had data coming into them, I could use the custom events funnel and actually do a funnel report. Um, right now I have like no data. Um, to match these criteria right now. This is sort of um, showing all of the different types of things. Um, you have custom events that you can set and then there's some um, other events, uh, also known as success events, that are just kind of by default in um, in here. And it just kind of grabs the first one. So it grabs the first three and then t adds um, the, the next two uh, in the list, uh, just kind of by default. And I can just kind of add, remove items from here. So Go ahead and remove comments and remove uh, these two. Because let's just say I was going to do it funnel view, which I don't have data for at the moment. You would see how many times the contact form was viewed and how many times it was submitted. And you can kind of get sort of the conversion rate between, um, you know, for that. And then you can also add, like, if you wanted to take a look at. Um, overall site visits and put that at the top so you can do, take a look at overall site and you know kind of do that as a as a as a um, funnel there or you could also do like entries uh, total you know there, there's a number of things that you could add um, whatever makes sense um, if you had um, an e-commerce site that kind of thing but the thing to know about um, events is that they're inc incremental I mean by default and uh, you can get into, I can get into more detail specifically about uh, these individual things. I'm just kind of talking more about the differences from the different types of variable groups today. And just the main thing to know by default events are incremental and you just kind of set them and anytime any uh, one views a, a page or clicks on a link or whatever, I mean these are these are custom events that can be set either on click, on page load, um, any kind of action that is being done, um, very often uh, setting, often setting these things on on um, uh, exit links, especially like social media links, that kind of thing. There's a number of reasons for setting these, but they're always incremental. Anytime it's clicked or viewed or interacted with in some way, um, it just increments by one, and you get that data. And then if you have them set up. Um, in sort of a funnel view where you can have start, started, stopped, uh, viewed, submitted, that kind of thing. Um, you can do um, funnel conversions with that data, or you just kind of see the the um, the incremental things. And then you can also use um, the events as a metric as well. So, uh, which we'll see in a moment. Um, in fact, I can go ahead and let's see. I can. The only one that I have right now are comments. So if I have any comments uh, listed on my website, um, that's the only one I'm actually tracking at the moment. Which I'm guessing for the time period I have, yet yeah, there's no uh, there's no data there. Let's see if I go back a little bit further. Let's just go for the year. Um, I think I had a couple of comments this year. Yeah, I had six comments. So you can see this is what the, the funnel would look like, you know, it just one section of it, but um, that gives you that, that idea. And um, I can go ahead and see, do custom conversions. Now, I don't have any custom conversions that I'm tracking right now. I just kind of threw categories in here for this tutorial. 
and that's something else I can start tracking. Uh, I just have to kind of go into my WordPress and kind of go into the back end and do some tagging for this, which I haven't done yet either. Um, and then uh, with the custom conversions, um, unfortunately I can't show you uh, in detail, but um, the nice thing about custom conversions is you can do a lot of correlations with, um, with them um, across pretty much almost any report on your on your um, on your tracking so they're really nice and they're they're uh, session based variables um, and then they persist across pages so that's one of the reasons why you can do all these conversions and everything and especially now that they've enabled conversions across pretty much all reports now and so you can basically do conversions for um, these evars across uh, pretty much anything and slice and dice it any way you like to uh, which is really really uh, useful I think but like I said, I'm not tracking this right now. Um, the other thing is custom traffic. And um, custom traffic variables, um, they need to be set basically on um, every page that is relevant for what you're tracking. So for example, here I have internal search. Well, I have a search box on every single page. So I need to be able to track um, the SPROP1 um, on every single page that I, have, that I have that internal search box on, which is pretty much on every single page. Um, now, internal search results doesn't have to be set on every single page of the entire site, but it does have to be set on every single page that is a search results page. Um, and then logged in, again, has to be set on every single page, and if you are in the logged in state, uh, it will show you um, that you're logged in versus not. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run the internal search. Uh, generally, if you do internal search tracking at all, uh, you tend to always set it as SPROP1. That's sort of the standard convention and best practice for, uh, for this tool. And you can see here for the year of 2013, I haven't had a lot of internal searches on my site, mainly because people come to my blog articles directly from Google and they don't need to search for the article because they're already there, they've already searched Google and they found what they were looking for. But uh, for those people who have come in and done searches, you can see here what people have searched and uh, misspelled sometimes. Um, and I have no idea what they mean by that. Um, but yes, yeah, so people have come in and done some types of searches uh, on my site. And it's actually useful to know, like, what are people searching for? Like, oh, people are interested in Site Catalyst API calls. I mean, one person has anyway. And, you know, perhaps that gives me an idea for a future blog article of, oh, okay, I haven't written anything about that yet. Let me consider writing something about that. Uh, but you can see here, this is basically what the um, what I've set up for internal searches uh, for this traffic variable. I mean, it just basically tracks the traffic. You do have some um, correlations that you can do with this, not as extensive as with the conversions, uh, but you do have quite a few that you can do here in terms of you can taking take a look and see like, okay, so people searched on that, and what kind of device were they looking? At? It was only one search, so it was other. <laughs> um, other basically means desktop in this case, uh, not a mobile device. And uh, I can just go ahead and go back you know, and look at what this one site like content. And uh, you can look at, um, let's say we can see traffic sources, let's say refer, referring domains. So we can see like where did they come from uh, before they came to the site and did a search. And both of them were typed bookmarked. That probably means it was me, and probably because I was looking for that article. <laughs> um, all right, so um, I'm, I'm hoping that this is making some kind of sense. So the, the custom events, I mean, they're individual events. They're, they can be set on page load, on click. They're incremental. Um, they can be used as metrics in other reports. And um, I think that the big thing is, for me, is using them for, for custom event funnels, especially like uh, for conversion, especially if you have any kind of specific conversions you want to track on your site. You know, you definitely want to have like the starting and end point of your conversion, if not some middle pieces as well, um, especially tracking uh, for conversions for, for carts and shopping carts and things. Although they do actually have um, shopping cart uh, conversion funnels, so that's separate as well. But if you have anything else that's not e-commerce related that you want to track that might be a, um, 
a conversion. And for me, my conversions, because I'm, uh, I'm looking for lead generation, I'm, I don't have a shopping cart that I use on my site. So for me, the, uh, the conversion is going to come from the contact form. That's my lead generation right there. So that's the custom events. And then the custom conversions, I mean, obviously, you're, you're looking at more deeply into conversions and looking at uh, correlations across the site and that kind of thing. And again, that there's session-based variables that persist across pages, which is different from the custom traffic. They're not session-based, and they do need to be um, set on every single page that, where you want to track the data um, so it doesn't persist across the entire site um, automatically. And um, and yeah, so those are the three different categories or types of custom variables that you can set when you're implementing. And um, how you decide this is basically by understanding the business requirements of the site that you're te te in tracking, whether you know you're it's it's your company or you're a, a consultant working um, you know independently like I am. Um, you have to understand the business requirements for the site, and then you also have to understand, you know, take those, translate those into your KPIs, your key performance indicators, um, and then based on that, and of course based on what the site is and, and all the different activities that can happen on the site, if you have videos, um, you're definitely going to be setting um, video tracking on uh, on the events, and, and as you saw last week with my video tutorial, I kind of talk about that. So. Um, and you can see here, these are the custom events for video tracking, which end up being taken out of the events rep um, reports and being uh, put down here into the video reports instead. It just kind of gets moved down here. But these are custom events as well. So you have that for video tracking. Uh, you can do that for any kind of lead generation that you're going to do on your site or any other kind of conversions that you want to look at in terms of a conversion funnel view. And then, of course, you want to be able to pair that up with your custom conversions and your custom traffic and making sure that if you have any kind of anything that's session-based that you want to track um, versus um, actually just custom traffic across your site. And um, I hope I'm explaining this um, all right, but uh, if you have any um, specific questions about these, uh, please let me know in the comments. I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you might have, and I can go into more detail on these individual pieces um, in a future tutorial. So please let me know. Uh, if you uh, like this video, please uh, like it and thumbs up it, and uh, please subscribe to view more tutorials that are coming in the coming weeks. And until next week, take care.